Hello, and welcome back to Therapist Plays Disco Elysium. <laughs> on today's episode, we meet some interesting characters. We finally stumble on the cryptozoologist's husband uh, and his pal, friend, protege, Gary, the crypto fascist. I got a couple of things to say about Gary, and uh, I got a couple of questions for him. <laughs> Uh, this one's a bit of a spicy one, so let's get into it. Okay, we're back. And it's time to um, make a little bit of progress here on the case. I say that every single episode, <laughs> and we never, we never actually make progress on it. I mean, I keep saying it, but like we know who killed the guy. <laughs> we didn't really know what the case is at this point. What do we got here? We know who did it. We just gotta... I, I don't actually know what our main objective is right now. I mean, we do have to get... Um, we have to pass a check with Titus. Titus? We'll return to that. Right now, I'm trying to solve the crime of... What does it mean to be human? <laughs> In this uh, nightmare world. That's the crime. That's the real crime we're trying to solve. Let's see. What do we got here? This was supposed to be for Mr. Gart, but... Uh, won't be, we won't be needing his uh, services any longer, I don't think. Uh, we did get some... What did we get? Some magne... Was that magnesium? We got the spirit. Yeah, we can always mag it up. Okay, uh, what else is there to do down here? I've not actually crossed this little area just yet. Let's see... What is uh, this one? Oh, maybe I maybe I can't actually. Is that it? Is that everything? I came down here. Maybe that's everything. I don't mean I don't see a way to open this. Is there anything down here? Maybe we'll, we'll try up that way. Sounds of life in the north. A washboard scrubs filth from fabric. Through the broken glass, dusty shelves, and a forgotten chair. I, it's so interesting. The forgotten chair. I mean, it seems like a lot of this world has been forgotten. Let's go check that chair out. Maybe the chair is having a an existential moment. It really is just a dark red chair. I huh. wonder what was so forgetful about it. Got a postcard. And a bow knot. Which uh, seems to be good for drama. Oh, it goes on the neck. Um, yeah, I would gladly replace this fucking thing. I hate it. <laughs> um, I don't know. I this is this is a part of the playthrough that I'm sort of indulging the community with. There, there seems to be at least one more thing relevant with the tie. I will keep the tie on until we have that moment, and then I will take it off. Um, we'll see where we go with it. There's a boat tucked away underneath the topolin. Okay, we kind of explored this area a little bit. I don't think there's anywhere else for us to go up this way. Maybe there is. This was near the waterfront. No entry. Okay. So, let's try going northwest then. Okay. 
Wow, it's already 4 p.m. on this day. We spent a lot of time in this area already. Just discovering ourselves. Learning. Who we were. Which is always a good use of your time. Um, okay. Let's head down here. Ooh, uh, there's cash. I spot some cash. I'll tell you what I like about this area so far. There's no politics. <laughs> there's no there's no one screaming at me to get involved in a political ideology yet. Let's uh let's check that out. Got some some money. Some money is someone in the back. Shoddy constructed boat house. Okay. What we got here? Oh, we had a thought. And some kind of... No, not. What is this? The scattering of bullet holes is spread across the cracked wall, reaching from one corner to the other. Hmm. Look, Kim, even more bullet holes. Something's definitely gone down here. Mm. Correct. The density of the bullet holes is unusual. Even in a general, average bullet hole frequency in Martinez's sense. Grim affairs. Meaning, this is a lot of bullet holes. Looks like fully automatic rifle fire. Something you don't see these days. Why not? The manufacturing and sale of automatic rifles was curtailed after the revolution. The destructive power of such tools proved to be too much. We do need to retain some humanity in this world. Now, there's a fucking idea that I can agree with. Um, and I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> uh, white check. Got a white check. Eight percenter. Not not a visual calculus kind of guy, really. You can level it up. <laughs> we got one point of visual calculus. Do we have any... Um, uh, okay. I gotta check my inventory first. Do we have anything that can increase visual calculus? Yes. Got some spectacles. Got a coat. Um, and that's it. Okay. Let's see what that did to our uh, chances. A scattering of bullet holes is spread across oh. the crack wall, reaching from one corner to the other. 28%. I, what I love is that, like, the essential work of a detective, like, <laughs> like being able to perceive m finer details in the environment and read people who are lying to you, like, all the stuff that, like, a, are synonymous with, like, good detectives is, like, the stuff we're the worst at. <laughs> I know in the lore, we're, like, an amazing detective, but, uh, our Harry is really not. He's not so much. Let's give it a shot, though. Let's just not count him out until he's, out, he's truly out. Let's roll the dice. Unable to piece Shit. together the big picture just now. There's a hole in the hypothesis. I'm dumb, yeah. A scattering of bullet holes <laughs> oh, fuck. like one giant smiling mouth smiling its deadly smile, laughing at you and the world and the living. Laughing at the world and the living. God damn it. Um, I mean, do we want to drop a point in visual calculus? I feel like reconstructing crime scenes is kind of important. I feel like we were just, we're so limited. I feel like all of these skills, I guess it's, it's worthwhile investing more in volition. Oh, it's only down because we've got damage. I see. Let's give old visual calculus a boost. Let's see what let's see what we can come up with. The scattering of bullet holes is spread across the. Forty-two percent. Reaching from what a row of yes. Shades stand facing the wall. We're a real detective. Them, a dozen at least. Their heads lowered and eyes blindfolded. It's quiet. No sound. No movement. Oh, this is. This is interesting. Ten meters away, 
other shades are lined up in an orderly manner. Automatic rifles prime. A gust of wind blows by. The coats of the firing squad flap slowly in the breeze. A single person stands on the side. Snowflakes fall on the wooden planks and the surrounding sand dunes, covering the land with the white of incense. A long time has passed since the moment of this fusillading. Rain and brine have since washed all the blood away. Not a trace remains. What is this? The abundance of bullet holes leads to two options. Either an inordinate amount of executions were performed here, or they did not use a conscience round, where only one soldier has the loaded rifle. Looks like this was a mass execution with everyone fully armed. Shit. Well, here I thought I wasn't going to get politics in this in this side of the world. Uh, and and the, while there's no person shouting at me to subscribe to their ideology, the world is screaming uh, the political crimes through environmental storytelling. Let's look at the people. A host of men, probably in everyday clothes, ragged from the conflict and covered in dust. They were not sitting, a common practice for executions in some nations, as demonstrated by the height level of the bullet holes. They stand, facing the wall. It's impossible to discern any details about their personality or background. Hmm. Ordinary people, familiar, each and every one of them. Who were they? Collateral damage on the path toward normalcy and progress. Such is your belief, officer. Maybe you should change it. They were praying, screaming. Collateral damage on the path toward normalcy and progress. That's a twisted rationale for a uh, public execution. Let's look at the soldiers. Seven men in combat uniforms and dark coats holding automatic rifles aimed at the people. Soldiers from some side, but from which one? Men of duty, dark duty. Who were they? In all truth, violence offers no answer. It's only the last available resort when all mediation fails. And here, all did fail. Some salient commentary from authority about violence. What's interesting, yeah, about authority especially is it's not like biased against, it's not biased like for using authority, using um, authoritative means or exercising authority. It, it's just that's that's the voice that, that lends our knowledge to that subject that, that detects uh, authority that has been developed we would say like maladaptively or irrationally in this case. Like when I think about how these skills represent like the conscious mind, part of, part of what makes people's personal integrity, like uh, are they, are they willing and able to do what they believe to be the right thing? That's what I would say like personal integrity is. Uh, and also doing so you know, even when no one's watching. Um, it comes down to like our value system, right? What kind of value system do we as people hold and how strong are our convictions? And a lot of times there is more safety in subscribing or falling uh, under the values of another person, right? Because if you make a mistake or if you fail at something or if you have to do something heinous, like in the line of duty, like, you know, it's been told in many uh, stories of war, like why do good people end up doing horrible things? Like common people, common soldiers, you know, can, can perform these horrific acts. Like it's part of our psychological warping of reality that allows us to in in some ways like bend our value system our moral system in a way that tells us well i'm doing this for a bigger cause i'm doing this because i believe in the 
strength of my country or the strength of my community or, um, you know, I'm doing this to protect someone. And when you fail or you make a mistake or you have to do something heinous and it's done under the guise of someone else's value system, there's safety in that. You can almost distance yourself from the mistake because it's not holistically yours. What this leads to is is uh, a lot of just groupthink, right? And people who lack strong personal conviction or who lack like a, a personal sense of morality. When we have to step in, inside of our own value system and say that, yes, I made this decision based on values that I have personally cultivated and fought for, and the decision was wrong or led to someone's harm or death, that's a, something that you have to wrestle a lot more with, right? It's very easy to say, well, everyone else is doing it, so it's okay for me to do it. That's subscribing to someone else's value system, not your own. Um, this is socially acceptable, right? Why should I uphold a moral standard when the rest of the world is corrupt? Like, it's looking to other people and saying... I'm going to let them set the standard and I'm going to set it, I'm going to let them set it real low and that's my ceiling, right? But that's not practicing in moral integrity. Moral integrity is having your own value system, um, which totally can be influenced and supported by other people's as well. But knowing that when you make a mistake, that you are responsible for your own actions, you are responsible for uh, the way you think and feel about things. You are responsible for your own morals and you are responsible for your own achievements um, and wrongdoings. And if someone is preventing you from achieving something, if you feel that way, they're not. All they're doing is preventing one pathway to that achievement. If someone is preventing you or something is preventing you from acting in good moral conscience, we think that they're preventing it, but they're not. They're preventing one path. And, and it takes a redefinition of our own value system to find uh, another path towards that. So I find this really interesting. Like, it, a lot of the uh, twisted escalation of, you know, wrongdoings in war times and in these like corrupt political systems like a lot of it comes down psychologically speaking to um you know look, look looking to the common morality looking to the common value system that's socially accepted and letting that be our own ceiling and just trying to act within that boundary because when we look at our own value system and act outside of it that's where we start to feel things like shame and regret and guilt we can protect ourselves from those things when we replace those words with uh, duty and mediation. And, uh, it, you know, it, it, I can't feel guilty if it was my responsibility. I can't feel regret if I had no other choice. I can't feel shame if I know so many other people did it as well. So they are protections. Let's find out who they were following. The Commandant. The one who gives the order. Machine gun fire crackling through the air. The lights of the muzzle flashes dancing on his face. Kim, who was in this execution? I don't know. I don't know who died here. Lined up beside that horrible wall. It could have been any of the parties involved in the revolution. Perhaps the ones executed here were the loyalist conservatives killed by the communists at the start of the civil war. Or it could have been the communists put to death during the last stretch of the conflict by the coalition forces. It could even have been the employees of the failed R&D center down the coast as their building was taken over by the revolutionaries. Or maybe. Reaction speed coming in clutch. You mentioned coalition forces. Could it have been them against the wall? Yeah. It's very unlikely the coalition forces were the ones who died here. They were always the last ones against the wall. To be honest, if a coalition member was anyone in this situation, it was a commandant, the superior giving the orders. So the coalition I seem to remember is like, 
like the RCM falls under the coalition, I think. Um, yeah, I honestly don't remember. A cold sea wind blows away the figures. What a haunting uh, environmental memory. And what a beautiful way to depict that. I'm kind of sad in some ways that like, you know, we're, we're lacking in some of these areas because I feel like there's so many unique moments that we would have not seen otherwise. Not to say that the moments we've experienced due to these guys has been like uh, totally negative. I should probably uh, heal myself a little bit. Because otherwise my volition is going to be like <laughs> severely damaged. We need to, we need some mag. We, we got to mag it up. Um, okay. We're just pillaging. <laughs> We're just pillaging the rem remains of this war torn society for trash. We're well, we're environmentalists. What do we got here? Chico Pico? What's that? Small wire framing inside this futuristic found. Oh, it's a hat. Aerodynamic shape of swoop skiers. None of its protective qualities. Covers the wearer's ears and eyebrows to bring down the drag coefficient. Okay. So it's for logic <laughs> to deduce the world, which we can't really. Inaccessible. Okay. Uh, what does it say? No ticket, ticket. I guess, did we level up recently? Or do I need, I have a little bit more to go before I can go do the check with, uh, what's his name? Oh, I guess I could have used that skill point to. Shit. I should have used that skill point for Titus. Whatever. By the time we get back there, we'll have another one. And we'll also have a cool pair of oversized superstar sunglasses. which would also impair our visual calculus, um, but would be quite deceptive ourselves. Okay, we've got options. Let's keep investigating the environment here. We're making uh, lots of good headway on our finances though. That's good. Let's see what we've got here. Some trappers, fishermen, crab people. Let's find out. Here we go. Nice and easy. Hey, it's oh, the Lena, fucking guy. Guys, not out of this gym. I found him. I found Lena's husband. There's a cylinder on the ground in which the man is arranging some netting. It looks like some kind of trap. He notices you. Who's there? Oh, the police. Hello, officers. His self-conscious enthusiasm renders his movements ungainly. He looks like your understanding of a scientist. <laughs> Once again, Harry coming in with like these very basic archetypal ideas about people. Is that people. the police? Why are the police here? Gary the crypto fascist? Oh my god, I can't imagine a worse pairing of words. I know crypto refers to something else in this world but i'm <laughs> i'm now thinking of someone who's like a cryptocurrency fascist don't worry gary i'll handle it what are you doing out here with gary while your wife suffers in confusion about where you are you must be morel to what do i owe the pleasure lena sent me she's been really worried about you and is waiting for you to get back uh, of course thank you for passing along the message that yes. damn water lock is broken, and we can't go all the way around the 881. The water lock's been fixed. It was fine when I crossed it. Yeah, that was me. I broke the water lock with my motor carriage, but it's fixed now. You can go back. 
I'm just going to tell him that uh, it's fixed. Oh, good. He doesn't need to know all that. We should really be getting back. Gary could use a hot shower and a warm bed. Sounds very uh, Australian. Did he say we can go back now? Yes, Gary. Crypto fascist. Yes, Gary. We can go <laughs> soon. If you see Lena, tell her I won't be long. What the hell? This game it reads my mind. Or am I reading the game's mind at this point? I don't know why I said that that way. And then the game just immediately did that. <laughs> I feel like Gary's just the kind of person that you feel comfortable yelling at because he's a little aloof. Sir, your wife is waiting for you. Get him, Kim! I just have to do one more round. See if the phasmid has taken the bait. Then we go in. Oh, and that's what he's doing. I thought he was catching crawdads, but he's looking for fucking uh, fantasy animals. Tell me about these phasmids. Mm. Well... First of all, it's damn difficult to find, which is why we've been knee-deep in the reeds laying traps for it. What makes it so difficult to find? Good question. Being a phasmid of the order Phantasmodea, a ghost insect, it disguises itself as plant matter. In this case, the reeds. Awful lot of reeds around. Uh, yes. How convenient for your inability to detect it. And I suspect it may have also developed other specialized techniques to protect itself from predators or scientists in our present case. Yes, I'm sure the phasmid has evolutionarily uh, changed its uh, strategy of deception specifically to avert the gaze of curious scientists. What sort of specialized techniques? It's my hypothesis that it has evolved certain electrochemical defenses that allow it to interfere with animal perception, impeding pattern recognition, confusing the visual cortex. So I would feel very uh, remiss if I did not mention the fantastic novel Blind Sight in this very moment, which I'm pretty sure I've already mentioned on this series at some point. Um, but there is a similar concept in Blind Sight, a science fiction novel written by a marine biologist who uh, they, they, humanity encounters these aliens that do not seem to have sentience like we think of it they're they're not sentient creatures they they're they're more like just reactive to their environments but they present as very intelligent they're able to like mimic human speech they're able to like they have these highly advanced survival mechanisms um they they present in all ways looking like they are self-reflecting but they're really not they like are, are, are just very adaptive to their environment. And one of the things that they adapt to is exactly like Morel is talking about here is um, the human eye has like kind of like a shutter speed, like a, like a camera, like there's a rhythm of opening and closing in a sense of like our perceptive field. And uh, the aliens like vibrate at a frequency that matches that shutter. And so like they could be right in front of you, but you can't see them. I don't, I don't remember exactly how it goes, but it's like insanely interesting uh, as a concept. Uh, now that's a very smart creature in a very smart book. Um, I kind of get the suspicion that uh, our cryptozoologists creature is less concrete science fiction, more delusion of his own fantasy. But we could be wrong. But I cannot describe how these defenses work, much less how they evolve. Hey ha Life specimen. How convenient that they are constantly eluding your grasp then. Yes, it makes perfect sense. You're beginning to suspect there's something paranatural about this phasmid. How big is a phasmid? I'm expecting it to be quite giant. One known species of phasmid, called the Megaphasmodea zoensis, is about the size of a grown man's forearm. So, uh, 
Seems puny, to be honest. <laughs> Why are you so interested in this stick bug? It doesn't seem to be as colorful as some other cryptids I've heard about. Typical rookie assumption. Insects are much we are more sophisticated creatures than those unversed in zoology give them credit for. Even simply catching a glimpse of the Insulindian phasmid would be the apex of my, of any, cryptozoology's career. But to study it and its defenses, find out how it stayed hidden so long, would be glory itself. What have you discovered about it so far? Very little, I'm sorry to say. Ah. No one's ever captured a specimen, so all our information is based on first and third hand accounts. So no one's ever found one. Not yet. That's what makes it a cryptid. Ah, that's. Um, just out of curiosity, <laughs> if there's no proof of its existence, how do you know it's real? Here comes Kim. <laughs> Here comes Kim to, to spoil the fun. Which I am in full support of at this point. I know it's real. Uh, he even seems taken aback by the suggestion. By which I mean, I've heard enough first-hand accounts to believe quite firmly that the Insulindian phasmid is more than mere superstition. Uh, Lena has said there has been a sighting of it here in Martinez. Yes. The most recent sighting was by a couple of teenagers along the coast here. That's what brought us to Martin A's specifically. Teenagers, huh? It's the first credible sighting in several decades. Admittedly, it's an unusual location for this species, but with all the sewage runoff upstream, it probably doesn't matter much anymore. Maybe it's died out? I have to resist the thought. Such an extraordinary creature is doubtlessly highly resilient. After all, it's generally thought to be capable of parthenogenesis. Um. Parthenogenesis? Yes. The females don't need males to reproduce. Makes it easier for a species to survive in adverse conditions. <laughs> females reproducing without males? A travesty, a crime against passion and common sense. This arouses no special feelings in me. And it shouldn't. Nature does not concern herself with ethical propositions. As a scientist, my interest is strictly dispassionate. There's nothing dispassionate about the way he talks about the insect. Tell me about these traps you've laid. Well, they may not look impressive, but Lena designed them quite cleverly. So I'm sure they'll do the trick. Lena designed them? Yes. How do they work? Simple. Attracted by the locusts, the phasmid crawls down the funnel and, having eaten its fill, can get back out. At least, that's the intention. The net isn't a perfect solution, but we didn't want to use anything that might damage the specimen's delicate exoskeleton. What are you using as bait? Locusts. Nearly all known phasmids are herbivores. Known by who? Of course. But we've of course that the Insulindian phasmid might occasionally prey on other insects. Inside the traps, a number of locusts crawl and tumble over one another in a tiny chittering swarm. Uh, and what if the traps don't work? They'll work, I assure you. The predatory hypothesis, using locusts as bait, accounts for the failure of previous efforts by other teams, which use plants. We have given this some thought. Yes. What? Um, you should return to Lena. I'm eager to return to her, I assure you. But I can't leave before we finish with these traps. My wife understands that just as well as anyone. Come on, Morel. We've been soaking out here for days. It's time to go back. Yeah. Leave the traps? Absolutely not. I won't let Lena down. Come on, she wants us back. I'm soaked up to my nuts over here. We'll both catch reed crabs if we don't dry out soon. Yeah, maybe listen to the crypto fascist this time. What? Let Lena down? Sounds like the cryptozoologist's wife shares a special connection to the Phasmid somehow. Uh, 
I didn't know the Phasmin was so important to Lena. Of course it's important to her. She's seen it. A verified sighting, on record. One of only 40 century, and it's hers. She's seen it? Really? Yes. That's how we first came to know one another, in fact. But that's her story to tell, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> As I have been sarcastically mocking this man's <laughs> entire uh, read on reality, I find that there is uh, something quite endearing about his, well, lack of passion for the Phasmid maybe, but clearly a passion for Lena and for validating her experience. It's quite admirable. Needless to say. You must ask her about the mysterious phasmin. Oh, I'm going to ask her. Suffice to say, it's long been our dream to find proof of the Insulindian phasmid together. I can't abandon course now. Uh, maybe you should come back after you warm up. No, no, no. The traps need to be monitored on a regular schedule. What would we do if the phasmid were to starve? While we were sipping tea at the hostel. He's dead set on this. What if we check the traps for you? I didn't expect you to take such an interest in our work here, officer. <laughs> <laughs> Cryptozoology and detective work are very similar. Yes, indeed. Both require a great deal of research. Yep. Attention to detail. Yep. And above all, persistence. Above all. All three things which we are very adept at. Uh, what do I do if there's a phasmid in one of the traps? Bring it to me at once. Just make sure the trap is closed tight. Where are these traps? There are four in total. One is to the south, on this little peninsula. By the boathouse is there. It's very near. Another we set in Land's End, to the northeast. It's behind a small sand dune there. On your way to the old radio tower. After the third is set near the canal, where you crossed, by a concrete slab. A big thicket of reeds going up the slope, and among them, you should check at least one of those before returning to this one, since I just said it. This one's more of a technicality, but still, better safe and stupid than sorry. That seems like a lot. Do we have really time for this extracurricular venture? What, aren't you having fun? Even relative to examining a weak old corpse, I'm not sure <laughs> about in the reeds qualifies as fun. But have it your way, detective. The thing is, is I feel like it's kind of appropriate for Harry to, like, uh, engage in something like this. Because, like, we're not a very good detective right now with our the way our skills are set up. But this is, like, I don't know. <laughs> something that may satisfy that itch for us. If you think it's important, you have been right before. What if I encounter the phasmid in the wild? I swear to God, if we fucking find one of these things and I'm wrong and I've been mocking this whole thing, I'm going to feel like such an idiot. That's highly unlikely. <laughs> but in the event you do, I'll spray you with a pheromone mixture I developed. You'll spray me? It's made of musk and research chemicals. The pheromone should attract the insect to you, or at least prevent it from bolting. <laughs> it's quite potent. Will last you about a week. We have to be sprayed with his pheromones. All right, all right, man. Uh, let's go on the armpit. This is the smell of dying reeds, of life <laughs> crumbling into the water. I hope you're not paying this. He dispenses it without letting you touch the canister, so it would be precious like holy water. <laughs> it is precious. A single dose cost me 50 real to do What the fuck? Not that I expect you to understand self-financing one's own research. Yeah, Kim. <laughs> you don't understand. The thing is, is I feel like in part of our mission, like, like I said before, we're here to solve this case, but our mission as a as a character now is like healing the world of its collective depression and if indulging in the delusional pa passion of this man 
and letting him spray me with a bit of pheromones uh, secures him a safe return to his uh, darling doting Lena, then, then that's just what I, that's the fucking bullet I have to take. Right. Which means you two can pack up and go back to the whirling. Yes, go home. Whatever he thinks about this detour, it's clear that these men are exhausted and in need of assistance. I'm glad you see it that way, Kim. Finally, someone's talking sense. <laughs> Thank you for your help. Gary and I will start breaking down, Kim. If you have any more questions, now's the time to ask. We'll be gone once you get to it. All right. If it's more cryptid related business you want to discuss. You'll have time for that later, too. I, I do want to know more about the cryptid related business. But what if the information is vital on the hunt? That's a good point. What about his eager to leave friend Gary there? Talk to him, too, perhaps. Well, I mean, I guess we kind of know how he became a cryptozoologist. He met Lena. I just always liked animals and puzzles. Searching for cryptids is a bit of both. He seems reluctant to talk about himself, but he'll open up if you prod a little. Have you ever discovered a cryptid? No. Very few cryptids are ever discovered, and not for a lack of trying. To stay hidden is a cryptid's primary quality. It's even in the name, cryptid. So, not to, uh... <laughs> you know, not not to lean too hard on this, but I, I mean, in my work, there are often people who I come across who, um, you know, experience similar perceptions that I would say are not the common perceptions or understandings of the world. And uh, it, it, it's a fine line you kind of want to walk when you're talking to someone who may have uh, schizophrenia or a psychiatric diagnosis or something like that not to say that morel is either of those things i think he just you know ha has some fantastical beliefs here but when people are talking about a reality that is real to them but it's not real to me it's not really it's not appropriate to be like oh what you believe is happening isn't happening you're you're you know like you it's not it's not helpful to confront them on that and a lot of times they know as well like you have some pretty high functioning schizophrenics who are aware that, you know, their their voices are um, just perceptive. Um, so it's a fine line between like indulging it to gather information so that you can help them um, versus not like uh, indulging it to the point of, I guess, like like co-signing on their perception like buying in like oh now i believe that too like you don't really want to do that either uh it's just helpful to ask questions like this like have you ever discovered one how many have been found of the list of cryptids kept by the cryptozoological society of Shemni, which is 4082 items long about 2000 have been confirmed as hoaxes two are categorized as confirmed discoveries the rest are in differing stages of discovery, refutation, and data collection. Like, whenever I'm in one of those situations and someone's telling me, like, I don't know, I, you know, I was, I woke up and things were flying around in the room or whatever, um, you know, which, which I've had, I've been in those conversations before. Like, I try to redirect to the tangible things that I can actually help this person with, like, you know, when you saw that happen, what did it feel like? What, what were you feeling? Well, I was scared. Like, okay, regardless of what you saw, the, the, the fear and the anxiety and the activation of your sympathetic nervous system is real. So, th like, that's the, the calculus I'm doing in my head to get back to, like, what's tangible? What can I work on? How can I help? Um, it's not appropriate for me to be like, no, that's crazy. Like, books don't fly around. You shouldn't have been scared because now I'm, like, not only... Uh, not being uh, empathetic to this person's condition. But I'm also... Uh, I I'm, I'm also distancing us from what could be a worthwhile therapeutic objective, right? Which is addressing that fear and the consequences of it. Yes, 
the Chateau Quan Forest Pygmy, who turned out to be an extinct species of primate, and a cave salamander from Hugo Grad, who is, honestly, quite unremarkable. It's in a zoo somewhere. So, like, where I would go with Morel, which he's, like, Morel mushroom guy, um, I, I would redirect, like, part of this conversation if, if he was, like, working with me in therapy on something. Be like, what is it like for you to be searching for something and um, to not find it? That's, like, a universal human problem. It has, like... It, we don't need to be discussing, like, is a phasmid or a Chautauquan forest pygmy real for the two of us to discuss the universal issue of I'm searching for something and can't seem to find it, which is going to provoke the same emotions in me as it is in you, right? Um, it's going to provoke this... this uh, intangible passion for something, but also this kind of like frustration for not seeing progress, but also um, the conviction of like, you believe this thing that other people don't yet, you know, like it, those are all human, universal human experiences. What is it like for you to be out here working on this for your partner? What is it like to share something like this with her? Um, Tell me about your experience in showing someone like Gary how to do this. Like, what are you like as a mentor? Like, there's so many different angles to go at that don't necessitate me buying into what he's talking about, but also don't necessitate me shutting it down. So I just find him, this character, to be an interesting representative for, like, a lot of the work you do as a therapist it doesn't even have to be someone schizophrenic. Sometimes people come to me and they're delusional about shit that's like not, you know, it, it, very intense. It's just like grand, general grandiosity. Like, I think I'm amazing at all these things when like they're just clearly not. And again, you're riding that line between not like confronting them. Like, dude, you're actually just delusional. <laughs> um, but also not like endorsing it with wow you really do know what you're talking about you know i would just ask them what is it like for you to to, to see that people don't always see that in you how would it be for you to demonstrate to people what you know what would that look like just kind of working like that it's, it's helpful for talking to narcissists as well because they're in such deep denial about everything in their life that um you can't you can't penetrate that with like just genuine straightforward therapeutic intervention you kind of have to do this like call it sneaky therapy we cryptozoologists are brutally honest with ourselves more so even than the public with cryptids most cryptids are hoaxes or they are never found that does not mean we should stop searching two out of four thousand is not even one percent Uh, the Indian Selindian Phasmid will be the third. Yes, let's... I would I would go here. Indeed. Yeah. If our expedition is successful, every paper in the world will report on it. From Revachol to Dushan too. It will be a zoological miracle. And that's another angle to go at this from. What What do you feel like success would mean for you in this? Well, I want to be famous. I want to be recognized. I want our community of zoologists to be respected. I want Lena to feel like her life's work has some tangible meaning. Like, those are all, like, universal human things. The hair on your arms stand up. Electricity. Sounds like reeds hissing. So you're living out your childhood dream It's here. not Charles' play. Just because I have to trade through the mud every so often. Why not just be, uh, well, I, I think this would be too, yeah, this would be too confronting. We would be implying that they're fake, which they are, but we'll, we'll stay composed. Thanks for explaining that. Yes. 
Oh God, there's more cryptid talk. I think we could already, we could talk about cryptid stuff later, right? It said that. All right. What cryptids precisely? I usually discuss these things with specialists. I could be a specialist. So I don't know what. We would have to discuss. He wants to say, but decides against it. Since you've offered to help, you need to ask him about specific cryptids. Cryptids you've heard about from Lena or his friend Gary. He won't just talk. Um. Yeah, I kind of want to. Let's talk about these later. I'll ask him. Let's, uh, let's have a little conversation with Gary. Let's see what the crypto fascist has to say about this whole ordeal. Military blockades are riddled with bullet holes. Hello, I'm Gary. Very generous of you to help us out, officer. Yellow man. I mean, officer. Oh, God. The lieutenant raises his eyebrows slightly and takes out his notebook. Yellow man. That sounds awfully familiar. Something to keep in mind for later. I'm just waiting for my friend Morel to finish up with his insect traps so we can return to civilization. Uh, yikes. Yikes. Um, not a lover of the great outdoors? I like nature, just not this bloody coast. It's mostly drunks and degenerates that come here. Um, you're very judgmental, sir. Nobody's perfect. I'm oh, sure you've been tempted. I've been tempted. But someone has to stay strong for Revacall. Revacall? He pronounces Revacall with a hard K, unlike other people. Serious question time. This man is no innocent. No one is. Yeah, uh, who the fuck is this guy? I don't like him. Oh, shit. Is this the guy who had all the racist shit? You said Revacall. I like to pronounce it the hard way. The old way. The Vespertine way. He winks at you. Trying to relay some hidden message. Inviting you to mispronounce it, too. Perhaps. It's odd. Yeah, a bit of dog whistling. It's a secret rite. A very fringe nationalist handshake, probably. So you're a part of the investigation. Do you know anything about the man hanging behind the whirling in rags? Let's hit him with the fucking... This is an interrogation now. Oh, so that's what the RCM in Martinez is about. Great. Great to hear someone's finally taken care of that. So you do know something about it? No, no. Nothing. He was some kind of mercenary. But everyone here knows that. I'm just glad to hear you're looking into it. He's not feeling very comfy in his clothes, is he? Strange. Let's put him on edge. Is this your mug? My mug? W why would you think that? You look like the kind of guy who might have a collection of mugs like this in his colonial mug collection. I can see you recognize it. <laughs> God damn this. Um, I can see you recognize it. It's in your eyes. I've got my visual calculus goggles on. I may have had a similar looking mug in the past. That's all. You look like the kind of man who knows it's a crime to lie to an officer. Still seems suspicious. Did I mention the mug was found at the scene of a lynch? Okay, okay. I admit it. I threw the mug away in the trash container behind the hostel. I know I shouldn't have, and I am very sorry, officer. You're not going to find me, are you? I mean... We kind of should. We kind of should. Fuck this guy, right? Uh, fuck it. Let's go for the maximum. Oh, God. 250? How am I going to pay that? Okay. I'll work harder. 
I'll pay it off. I promise. And I'll never do it again. I don't know what got into me, really. Work has been stressful lately. Damn Koiko's price dumping us out of competition. What did you do, Gary? Nothing. Nothing. Just answering some questions. Helping out the law. Here we go. Start pumping that sweet info. Yeah. How'd you get into the trash container? I know a guy who works with the trash collection services. CS Municipal. He gave me a master key for the trash containers of Martinez. Why would you need to get into everyone's trash? So I can use the Whirling's trash compactor to store my own stuff. Garbage disposal is expensive as hell. The damn Himeans run it like a mob. I'm sorry, okay? I thought I could cut costs. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have disgraced myself. So here's another thing that I want to come back to in terms of the value systems thing that I talked about. Even if you are not looking at someone else's value system and saying, that's why I'm doing this, and there's a safety in, you know, well, I'm only breaking someone else's, and if I break my own, it's more regretful. The thing is, is our own personal value system can be very corrupt and irrational. Like, it's probably a very strongly held belief of his that foreigners ruin everything right like and that's not something that he's necessarily subscribing to about someone else i'm pretty sure he's deeply explored that for himself and stuck to it just having your own convictions and sticking to them doesn't necessarily mean you're in good shape because your value system could be fucking garbage as well disgraced no need for the histrionic sir it was after all just a trash container he studies his reaction Gary doesn't answer. Gary, did you put the clothes of a murder victim, the man who was hanging behind the whirling and rags, into that trash container? Officer, please. Let me explain. It's not like that. Do explain. I was only cleaning up. I live right across the yard from where he was hanged, and I saw him stripped naked. All the clothes lying around in the yard, smelling. People are animals, you know? Yes, yes. What happened? Then I came out to clean up the rags because no one else would. I put them into the Whirling's trash, along with a broken mug, admittedly. He changes his mind mid-sentence. Okay. I was coming to throw the mug away, and, well, I threw the mug there and the clothes, too. Right. It was just civic duty. Exactly. That's exactly what it was. Civic duty. Uh, dude, fuck this guy. You wouldn't know anything about the this victim's missing armor, would you? Armor? No. I, I mean, yes. Of course. I know he was wearing armor, but I don't know anything about it. There's something going on here. You should observe him more closely after this topic is concluded. Let's move on for now. I hope I can help your investigation in my small way. Don't be so relieved yet, Gary. This bad cop may have been in your apartment admiring your mug collection. Perhaps a little intimidation? You were surprised to see my colleague, aren't you? Not many Seolites here or anywhere other than Sail. I meant no offense. Truly. Do you remember how, when we met Measurehead and I said the next racist will be a really good one? Yes. Well, this is that racist. Are you, Gary? Are you a racist? Hey, man. All I meant was there are not many Seolites around here. I'm just stating a fact. The lieutenant is a native of Revishaw. Oh, yes. Of course he is. I was just speaking about his connections. Let's change the subject, okay? Ah, you don't want to talk about this more, do you? Okay. Are you a cryptozoologist too? No, no. I help Morel with research sometimes, and I've learned some things along the way, but I don't usually go in for picnics like this on my own. What does he do then? This feels like a good opportunity to dominate him. <laughs> Our skills, I just want to fuck this dude up. 
What do you do then if not cryptozoology? Oh, this and that. Sounds shady. Officer, I would never. I just didn't want to bore you with unnecessary detail. <laughs> I got another achievement for unbelievably boring fuck. <laughs> oh my god. Work as a special courier. You know, urgent deliveries, overnight deliveries, deliveries to out of the way locations. This guy, I cannot be the most boring person. This guy is way more boring. So you deliver things, what kind of things? Oh, I don't know the contents, officer. Part of my job is discretion. He's trying too hard to seem untroubled by your question. The rigidity in his posture gives him away. Do you deliver drugs? No, no, that's far too dangerous. Besides, dealing drugs isn't for people like me and you, officer. Do you deliver guns? No, nothing like that. I leave that to companies with hundreds of years of tradition in arms manufacturing. No need for an amateur like me cutting in. Do you deliver letters to the secret mistresses of corporate and government officials? What do I look like? A pansy? Yes. Besides, that kind of cavorting goes against the community values that would strengthen our city. Is that right? You're a simple cop. Ask him a simple question. He can't beat around the bush much longer. Come on. You've already behaved suspiciously with the trash container business. Stop evading the question. Okay, fine. You got me. I'm a special topping pie delivery courier. What? You heard me. I deliver topping pies. It's temporary. I'm looking for another job. Not many jobs for good men out there these days. You said you deliver special topping pies. What makes these topping pies special? They're wheat free and vegan and huge. He's thinking of a way to gain some advantage from his embarrassing situation. That's basically it. I'm a pie delivery man. How about we change the subject? You want to change the subject quite a lot, Gary. I'm satisfied. The crypto fascist. Because I am. Yes. Yes. Why is he shifting around like that? We'll, we'll keep pressing him before we ask. Sure do, officer. So you live around here. Have you found your door open? <laughs> Mr. Claire must be very angry with you. Mr. Everard? Yes, he insisted that I open the door to your apartment. So you work for Everard Claire? Officer, please tell him we're good. No, no, tell him I'll make it up to him. So you're not in good standing with... The old mob boss. What have I done? Union boss, He'll whatever. Send the muscle after me. As he lowers his tone, he hunches his back. Really, I don't know what it was about. I just opened the door. Try not to shit yourself, Gary. It's just an open door. Nod grimly. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna just nod grimly. Of course, of course. I won't do it again. If there's anything I can do to assist you, or the union, just ask, okay? I'll try to help if I can. This scared him proper. He's positively melting from fear. Has to prop himself up with a lot of anger to keep it together. The weather vein has turned. He cannot be unturned. I love how much Kim is enjoying this. He clearly liked his squirming. He may even have changed his mind about the whole door opening operation. That's right, Kim. It all has a purpose. Now, let's let's squeeze him. Let's squeeze him good. Let's analyze his composure. That shirt looks very uncomfortable on him. Look at the buttons, barely keeping that thing together, as if something is ready to rip out from under <laughs> his massive muscular there's something underneath those uh clothes yes like a piece of ceramic armor for example Shit. one that makes a clicking sound when the plates meet each other resembling pearls or marbles 
Stolen from the corpse in the yard near where he lives. Fucking Gary! Gary is the thief? He stole the armor? I see you're a connoisseur of high-quality combat gear. I knew you'd figure it out, officer. That's right. I'm sorry I didn't tell you at once. I was... That's that. Uh, we're a real detective. I was ashamed of what I did. Good. And I didn't want you, should... you to know. You see gleaming white ceramic shine underneath. A thin layer of interlocking plates covers his gaunt torso. This shame is surprisingly sincere. Gary, what's going on? Gary? <laughs> what's going on, Gary? Later, morale. I've got apologizing to do. God, this no. guy sucks. You've got explaining to do. Give me that armor now. Why did you really put those clothes in the trash? Everyone was picking those pieces off him, and I was watching them do it. And they'd scattered his clothes all over the yard. Everything was smelling. So I went there to take out the trash and started cleaning up. All those rags on the ground, him swinging up there, and I had a lapse of honor, sir. I thought, he's a foreigner. They all say he wasn't from here. Hmm. So it's okay because it's a foreigner. Okay. I see you. I see you, Gary. Gary! Only the caress was left, so I stripped it off him. It was early in the morning. No one saw me. I took it with me. It was a mistake. Had I known it'd give you guys trouble, I... I wouldn't have... Fuck. It's okay. It was a loose end, and you are tying it up now. I'm so fucking sorry I called you Yellow Man. Sealite officers commanded the Suzerain's navy. Most of them sided with the king when... It's difficult to say what the lieutenant thinks of this historic apology. His face does not belie emotions. I'll defer to Kim on this one. Give me the armor. He sighs again, hangs his head, and unbuttons his shirt fully. A cuirass that matches the dead man's boots comes into view. Soon it is in your hands, smelling of his sweat. Why did you lie to me, Gary? Because I was weak. I should have told you the moment I saw you, but... The hell, Gary? You in trouble? <laughs> Come on, Gary! I'll explain later. Do you know who killed the hanged man? I always thought it was the Union, but I sure as hell won't go around saying that anymore. You have my word. I don't know, and I won't be running my mouth on this subject anymore. We done here, Gary? Yes, absolutely. I will never do anything like this again. I, I won't mess with Mr. Clare either. You have my word. Mm, okay, Gary. Thank you for your cooperation. Lots of people out there miss the good old days. You know, it's kind of fitting to be a cryptozoologist, which seems to be this lifelong pursuit of the imperceptible truth that everyone is missing, that if they just looked a little harder, people will start waking up. I I have detected the truth that no one else has, this kind of delusion. And to also be the kind of person who looks at the world and says, yeah, the imperceptible truth of it all is that it's these other people who are ruining it. It's It's all of these foreigners and feminism and like all, all of the like stupid boogeymen that people come up with for why the world is like worse today than it was before and when you press them on where's the evidence that things are getting worse oh i they can't find it it's a phasmid it's kind of fitting to be a, a crypto fascist An interesting pair of ideals well, that was a, an interesting conversation. It's a great place to hide something, kind of out of the way, being so close to the water. This is about nothing, me. just a hunch. The hunch passes, leaving you there by the old boy bobbing in the water. Time to go. Uh, let's check it out. 
The number on it says 11. Okay. I guess we'll store that in the old Mind Palace memory bank. Well, uh, an interesting little tangent from our adventure. I guess that's all we really can do down here in the fishing village. Not sure how we get further that way, but I guess I guess we can go back and uh, do the thing with Titus now. There's a trap in the reeds at your feet. Looks like the same one you saw Morel set. Well, yeah, okay, we'll come back for the traps. It's a side quest. Let's go talk to Titus. Let's see if we can uh, press him on the case. And then, yeah, it looks like there's actually plenty of stuff that we can come back here and do. So, that is what we will do.